much planning effort goes into bargaining and coordination with competing systems. These differences in emphasis would clearly lead planners to organize their resources in different ways. So to take one example alone, the amount of time and resources devoted to analysis would be quite different. Moreover, the use of planning methods would be quite different. So in a rational or comprehensive approach, the need for extensive analysis, alternative strategies, formal decision based on plans and formal evaluation will call for formal application of relatively complex methods. Okay, so incremental planning, on the other hand, would be less likely to involve complex methods in analysis and strategy making, although there might be more use of formal methods of evaluation in the learning element. Okay, methods of coordination and bargaining would be quite important. It seems important here to recall one of the central assumptions underlying this, pl this planning framework. Okay. The choice of, evalu uh, of evolution of a planning approach depends on the system and the environment. There is no single best way to plan. Instead, the planning approach should be consciously devised to fit with a particular situation at a particular time. For some systems in some environments, rational or comprehensive planning would be most effective. In other situations, incremental, transactive or radical planning would be more appropriate. Okay. So we'll move on to the next communication strategy, which is planning to learn. Okay, so planning to learn is the conscious effort to get and use information about the effectiveness of the adaptation of the planning system to the system and about the adaptation of the system to the environment in order to improve both planning and system adaptation. Now, this is the third level of planning. Here, planners apply the elements of ASDAL to create effective evaluation strategies. There are two essential aspects. One is a set of values or attitudes within the system and planning subsystem. The other is more technical. This is the use of a variety of methods and subsystems to gather information and to process it for use in decision making. Okay, so if you look at the value aspect, that is critically important. Okay, the most sophisticated and effective evaluation methods and systems possible will have little impact if planners and decision makers are not willing to learn and change. So one of the unfortunate values which seems to be associated with planning is a certain level of arrogance linked with defensiveness. Okay, It is not the plan that is wrong in some respects, but the planners themselves. Okay, When this attitude prevails, planners are understandably reluctant to learn openly. So while recognizing the limits of planners, we must also recognize the complexity of systems and environments and the weakness of many of the theories on which our plans rest. Having made this recognition, the importance of learning from experience becomes obvious. Planners and decision makers as well need to be encouraged to learn even if this means admitting mistakes okay so only when this attitude prevails will learning be maximized and the improvement in plans and planning take place okay now we looked at the value aspect so if we look at the technical aspect okay it is important as well okay there are two elements to be considered here 
One is the structure that planners develop to guide their efforts to learn and the other consists in evaluation methods. Okay, if we look at structure, planners often speak of summative and formative evaluation. Right, so these terms distinguish between two purposes of evaluation and learning. The first, that is summative evaluation, is intended to aid decisions on the overall effectiveness of a particular planned action, or in our terms, a particular adaptation strategy. Is it good or bad? The second formative evaluation is concerned with more or less continuous learning for the purpose of improving a strategy or a planning process as it is being developed and carried out. Okay, so there are five important kinds of evaluation comparisons that can be made at various points in the planning and implementation of an action program. Okay, each involves a judgment, usually based on data, about the fit between key stages in planning and acting. The evaluations that come earlier in the process tend to have formative purposes. Need evaluation compares a need in the environment with the goals that are established to reflect that need. This assessment is made early in the planning and is in effect an initial judgment of the potential for a particular kind of adaptation of the system. So is the need sufficiently important so that if we achieve the goal, our output into the environment will be judged important enough to get resources for our system? Okay. Design evaluation compares the goal with the way resources are allocated to meet the goal. In effect, this is evaluation of the fit between the goal and the plan. In addition, it includes evaluation of the planning process leading to the kind of learning about the planning approach which helps planners modify the way they plan. Okay? Management evaluation compares plan and implementation. This is the monitoring of action that is an essential part of the action element of planning. The comparison is between the plan and immediate outputs. In a communication plan, outputs might include such things as the number of radio programs, the number of telephones installed, or the number of farmers enrolled in discussion classes. Okay, you remember all of those instances, right? Okay, so outputs are related to effects in performance evaluation. With this kind of evaluation, we begin to ask questions about um, changes that outputs are making. So, are people learning from radio programs or discussion classes? Are they using telephones? So, these kind of changes are often called effects. With this type of evaluation, summative kinds of judgments begin to be made. Okay, the final type of evaluation is impact evaluation. Okay, so with this mechanism, we seek to find out what differences effects are making in comparison with the original need. Is learning leading to be more effective participation in development programs and to higher productivity on farms? Is the use of telephones improving healthcare delivery or the sense of solidarity between people in the country and in the city? So this is the ultimate kind of judgment about the value of the planned action, in sum about the adaptation strategy. This is where evaluation with summative purposes most often takes place. Note that by the time impact evaluation is carried out, considerable time has passed. The need at the beginning may have changed, especially in complex environments. There are many evaluation methods over here. Okay? Some of these 
such as survey research can be used for practically any type of evaluation. Others are more specialized. Management information systems are used to monitor action. Okay. Field experiments are used to pilot test strategies. Okay. Cost benefit and cost effectiveness methods are used in design evaluation to evaluate alternative strategies. They are also used as part of the impact evaluation. Case studies generate insight into complex processes, helping planners and decision makers to understand how and why things happen.